Howdy banger fans, Blaine Smith welcoming you to another Overkill Reviews. This one's a patron's pick edition. What does that mean? Well, we have a Patreon campaign and one of the perks of it is you get to pick a record that we didn't review that you thought we should have reviewed. And then you get what you want, this review, and I get what I want, which is not having to sell you a product to shave your genitals right now. I'm gonna assume you're already like, comment, and subscribed, so uh, let's just listen to some music. Hooray, it's the newest album from Panopticon. It's called, again, Into the Light. It came out May 15th on Bind Rune Recordings. And here we are. So we've talked a lot about Panopticon on this channel, including a great interview that me and DK did that might appear somewhere around me. I don't know. Uh, so let's be quick about this. Formed in 2007 in Kentucky, but now located in Minnesota. This is a one-man project from very nice man, Austin Loon. Lun? Loon? I probably should learn his name considering I've talked to him. Shit my pants. <laughs> This is folk black metal, and when I say folk, I don't mean you did an Ancestry.ca test and found out you're 1 18th Swedish, so now you got a Mjolnir the size of my head tattooed on your stomach. It is American folk metal. Fuck yeah! Uh, this is either the ninth or 10th Panopticon album, depending on how you want to slice it. Uh, all have been good to perfect, uh, generally, uh, according to everyone across the board. So let's get on with the review of what is probably a very good record. It's a very good record. Off the top, I'll just say the last Panopticon, The Scars of Man on the Once Nameless Wilderness Part 1 and 2 was actually my least enjoyed Panopticon album. Uh, this was because I can get atmospheric black metal anywhere and I can get folk black metal anywhere. What I can't get is a perfectly blended mix of the two. You have to go to a specialty store, ask a guy, he's gonna take you in the back room if you want that special shit. Um, I'm happy to say though, the two halves are living in harmony once again, and it is glorious. Ah, so the story of this record is it's meant to be a journey through a bad period mentally and emerging at the other end. Uh, it's even gone so far as a portion of the profits uh, of the record sales being donated to help folks living with severe mental illness, something you know I've talked about a lot on the channel. And boy, did I not need a press release to figure that out. Uh, the album flows fantastically through uh, that emotional journey. Uh, and uh, I think it's one of the things that it actually does really beautifully uh, and really poignantly. Because if you hear, oh, it's a journey through a dark time, you figure maybe it's like a parabola, right? Oh, happy sad, ha happy, happy, however you want to structure that parabola. Um, but the, the, the flow of the album is much more, oh, the highs and lows, and it's not consistent because, you know, th these are human emotions. You don't go, oh, I'm happy, oh, I'm sad, oh, I'm happy again, great. Um, uh, there's great moments of even the, the positive stuff transitioning into black metal and it blending. Um, here's a clip of it. <laughs> interesting about the black metal towards the end is it has a bright quality to it, which is something I frequently criticize in the post-black metal world. Uh, it's why Death Heaven Sunbather doesn't do it for me. I just don't like bright combined with black metal. But the interesting thing here is because at the start of the record we've got, you know, more traditional black metal and then as we're going through this emotional journey, the black metal is becoming brighter. It serves a purpose and I can appreciate it and it doesn't make me mad and that makes me happy. 
If you like richly textured music, uh, this is really a great album for that as well. This is a no jokes, nothing silly added because I don't even need to add anything silly, it's so silly. This is a list of everything Austin does on this record. Uh, guitar, drums, bass, four, eight, and 12 string bass, that is. Keys, lap steel, pedal steel, uh, banjo, square neck resonator, acoustic guitar and bass. Remember those guitars and basses I mentioned earlier? Those were electric, now we're talking acoustic. Uh, he does vocals, of course, screamed, growled, sung, and choirs. He plays a mandolin, and he, I guess, recorded some of the samples himself. Uh, relax, Austin. But. Apparently he knows his limits and plays within them because there's also a violin and cello and instead of I guess learning the violin and cello, he got two people to play those on the album. So, <laughs> I mean, I guess he, it's good that he took a break. What's surprising about that is none of that stuff really overpowers or seems frivolous, which is something a lot of European symphonic metal bands could learn. Um, on top of that, he even snuck in some death metal to go with the black metal on the track Moth Eaten Soul. And I want to listen to that again. Let's listen to that right now. That heaviness is a great way to balance out that brightness that comes later in the record that I talked about earlier. Uh, there's some great explosions in the sky reminiscent post metal going on here too. Basically what I'm trying to say is this whole record is got an absolutely ridiculous Venn diagram of like seven different things. Black metal, death metal, post metal, folk metal, found sounds, ambient that a couple of us happen to fall right at the middle of. and. For us, it's gonna be a fantastic record. For me, there's nothing that really didn't work on the album. Um, everything is really good. There's a few things I could nitpick, but honestly, even saying them out loud, I think would sound dumb. The only thing I can really say is, it's a Panopticon record. If you've heard Panopticon before, going in, you have a 80% idea what the record's gonna sound like, and there's like 20 or 10% that's gonna like, you know, whoa, hey. Okay, it's conclusion time, and right now I want to talk about reviewing real quick because this is a, uh, a constant issue on the internet. Uh, I've been giving out a couple of three and a halfs lately, and people are like, wow, you hated that record. You were so mean. Three and a half is a good score. It means the record was enjoyable. Uh, what usually it also means is just that it didn't surprise me. It didn't really like replace anything in the collection, and... Um, you could technically say this about this Panopticon record too. Um, it makes minor tweaks to the Panopticon formula, especially in the inclusion of that death metal action I was talking about, but ultimately it still sounds something familiar to a Panopticon fan. However, while in our interview, Austin very modestly refused to admit uh, that he is the only person making music like this. He is the only person making music like this. So if he changed the formula, I'd actually be upset about that because there's only a handful of Panopticon records and he can release more that sound similar to his other records and still be really adding to a great catalog uh, for people like me that absolutely love this and crave more of it. Um, so while he's not reinventing the wheel, he's driving on weird wheels he invented himself. So I can't keep asking him to make new wheels. He already made a crazy new wheel. I really like the record. Uh, it's it's still fresh, uh, it's still unique, it's still Panopticon, and it easily will fit into the rotation of Panopticon records I have, because I don't have enough, and I want more, and that's why I'm giving this four and a half out of five skulls. Uh, that all enjoy a different Panopticon record and are excited about each of them individually. Ah! Shout out, shout out time. time. No, we love shout outs because hey, I get to talk about a couple more records really quick. Uh, so hey, if you want more, I mean, there's only one Panopticon, uh, but if you want more like ambient -y, cool, uh, atmospheric black metal, we have Groza, The Redemptive End, coming out on AOP Records. That's a great thing. If you want something totally different, I said the words death metal, so I'm putting a death metal plug in here. Galvanizer's prying sight of imperception on Misako Un Ojo Records. Uh, uh, is a really great record and hey 
you know Brad, uh, our buddy Brad, uh, co-worker, friend, homie Brad, uh, he just wanted to shout out uh, Of Sulphur's Oblivion. It's Black and Deathcore featuring ex-Suffocate vocalist Ricky Hoover. So, you know, hey, hey, do Brad a solid and check that out as well. And that's it. Thanks for coming out. I'm Blaine. Uh, you can catch me at twitch.tv slash mental comedy. Uh, we have a Patreon. You can support us there and you can uh, yell, compliment, or just say things completely off topic down below and, and I'll get in the mix and we'll have a little chat and smile.